podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining. We're super excited to have everyone here today um, to talk about the crucial marketing metrics for 2022. We have a really great expert on to give her, us all her expertise, so I'm super excited to hear what she has to say. Again, thank you everyone for hopping on. We're going to jump in in just a second, but I want to make sure that everyone is able to use the chat box feature, which is a question box um, where you can input your questions and also interact with us while we're in the webinar. So while everyone is still joining, I'd love for people to put into the question box where they're calling in from today. Super excited to see what type of audience we have out there, who is on this call today. I know in light of the pandemic, we're all over the place. So feel free to put in where you guys are coming in from. I'm super excited to see, let's see here. We got people calling in from Boston. We're based in Boston too, Memphis, ten Tennessee, Gary from Florida. Awesome. Um, we have Ohio, Vancouver, Canada. Love our Canada folks up there. North Carolina, New York, Florida, Kansas City, Texas. Oh my goodness. People from everywhere. Toronto, Ontario, Pennsylvania, West Palm Beach. Wow. Holy smokes. We got a lot of different people on here today from a lot of different areas. So this is awesome. Again, welcome everyone and thank you so much for hopping on. So with that being said, let's jump into a couple housekeeping things and we'll get started. All right, so a couple logistics that I just want everyone to be mindful of. The webinar will be recorded. So don't worry about taking notes or anything like that. The webinar will be recorded You'll get the materials in your inbox later on today, and you'll also be able to easily access this webinar recording on Local IQ's YouTube channel anytime you want. So just go on to YouTube, search up Local IQ, you'll find our channel, and the recording will also be easily found on there. Also, I want everyone to know, I know you kind of tried to use the question box just now, but be sure to stay stick around for the Q&A segment at the end. The last couple of webinars we did, we had a really, really great session, lots of questions coming in. So keep those questions coming our way and we'll save them to answer at the end. So definitely uh, put those into the question box. All right. All right, great. So I know some of you here today might already be working with us at Local IQ. You might be familiar working with our sister companies, Reach Local and WordStream or maybe you're totally new to us and that's great too. Uh, so I figured it would be a good idea to just warm everybody up to who Local IQ is. So we're a full-fledged marketing platform where we're all in one to help you find, convert and keep customers. So we'll meet you wherever you are in your marketing journey and make sure that you find success. So that's a little bit about us. We offer services across you know, the US, Canada, all over the globe. Um, so definitely check us out. We're an all-in-one marketing platform and we're so excited to have you here with us today. Great, so a lot of folks um, from past webinars have asked, you know, where can you find out more about us? Where can you find more in-depth information on the topics that we cover here in our webinars? definitely check out our blogs that are on our websites there and be sure to follow us on social media too. We are on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and you can find updates on major marketing news and marketing tips and strategies and also see our featured blog posts and register for future webinars, things like that. So definitely check us out because of course we can't cover everything that there has to do with marketing in just one hour. So you'll definitely want to dig in a little bit deeper with the materials we have um, for you online. Great, so a little bit about to me. It's wonderful to meet you all virtually. Um, my name is Susie, I'll be your webinar host today. So a little bit about me is I am a content marketing specialist over at Local IQ, where I write educational content on PPC, social media, search engine marketing, SEO, pretty much anything under the marketing sun. And I came to this position because I was previously um, a digital marketing consultant and client facing over at our sister company, WordStream. So I took that knowledge and experience of coaching clients and small businesses and businesses of all sizes through their marketing journey and took that knowledge and applied it to the educational content I write today. A little bit of a fun fact about me, 
I'm based out of Boston and sadly my favorite season is coming to a close. I love the winter time. I love to go skiing on the weekends in between work. So um, yeah, that's what I, a little bit about me. I'll hand it off to our amazing expert and presenter today. Thanks, Susie. So I am a data-driven strategist that is focused on driving revenue growth for companies across the country. And I love to focus heavily within the financial and home improvement space, and a lot of the times in grocery as well. When I'm not working, you'll find me at a CrossFit gym, playing softball, or going on adventures with my dog, Aspen. And like Susie, I'm based in Boston, Mass, but I don't love the winter. I spend a lot of my time playing softball, like I said, so the spring and summer are my favorite times of the year. And uh, as we continue through, we're gonna go through our agenda and understand why we're all here. So uh, marketing metrics 101 and why they're important. Four crucial metrics to understand in 2022, what these metrics mean for you and your business, and then looking at good marketing ROI and what attribution has to offer. Now, throughout the presentation, I want you guys to be able to be vocal, ask questions in the chat, and really engage with us because we're here for you to make sure you get the best out of this. So, like I said, feel free to jump in, ask questions, uh, and we'll answer them throughout. But we're gonna stop, start with a pop quiz. So feel free to type in the question box. How do you feel about your current reporting methods? What does that look like for you? Are, are you feel strong about it? Uh, is that something you need to work on? So that I can get a better understanding of how to really shape all of the content we're going over. Yeah, for sure. This is a great thought provoking question. I know there's folks on all different levels here. Some are saying, you know, they're totally lost when it comes to reporting and that's okay. Some have a really good handle on their reporting. That's awesome. Um, you know, so really, really great to see that everyone's in a different spot with their reporting and that's okay. Some folks here, uh, Brian on the call said that it needs a little bit of work and that's okay too. Some are feeling not good. Jennifer, no, um, definitely need work. Some feel they're way too casual. And, you know, I think for a lot of folks and a lot of businesses um, want to improve on this. And there's a lot of people in here. Some are saying middle of the road. This is great. So keep those, keep those thoughts with you as we go through this content today. Great uh, starting question, Marisol. Awesome. So let's start at the beginning. Why are marketing metrics important and what does that mean for you? So marketing metrics is quantifiable ways of measuring success with your business. Now, that's a really complicated way of making sure that we understand what marketing is doing and what metrics we're looking at for success. So many of you are small business owners or marketing managers. And when we think about spending money on marketing, we have to understand why it's going to pay off or how it's going to pay off. And I'm sure that sounds familiar to a lot of you. Having to put in money into something that we don't know that's going to work 100% is kind of scary. So understanding marketing metrics and attribution is the way that we're, we make this seem less scary and we understand how things are actually working. And we're able to understand your audience in different ways. Now, I'm sure you can tell me exactly who your customer is based off the fact that they're a homeowner, they're based in the South Shore, and they're interested in kitchen repair, for example. But how do we understand how they actually work with your media? So digital marketing lets us find those individuals, meet them, and marketing metrics allows us to track that success. Now, throughout the presentation, I'm going to use a lot of different terminology for marketing metrics. So to begin, let's make sure we're all on the same page. What does marketing metrics mean to you? Is that success? Is that going into what impressions, clicks, and conversions are? Now, it really will depend for you and your business, but let's start with the basics. Impressions are really the big piece of the pie. We wanna understand what those are on a broad scale. So that's your layer of your audience, everyone that we're potentially reaching. Clicks are those people who are starting to be ready to engage, whether it's the first time they saw your ad or it's that they're getting to your website because they saw something and converted later. Uh, and then conversions are really when we, people become your potential customers. So you go from a huge piece of the pie to a smaller slice to those individual people that you're actually reaching. And metrics are the way we look at each one of these stages so that we can make informed marketing decisions because that's the key to all of this. We wanna make sure we're putting out the right information to the right audience at the right time. And why is this important? 
Um, so we found that business owners in general don't always understand what the marketing habits have to. So 89% of leading brands already use key metrics to define their success, but success is a loaded term. How are you defining success? Feel free to put that in the chat and we can kind of understand that further. We're moving away from the days that we put out an ad and hope that it sticks. And essentially we're proving something's working with digital marketing. So understanding what your business goals are, whether they're getting leads or getting patient acquisition and making sure they're pertinent for our overall success are gonna be important. Marketing metrics is important to telling the story to make sure that we're getting the right audience at the right time. And it's important to understand how this can help you stand out. So like we heard in the chat earlier, not everyone is on the same page when it comes to metrics and analytics. So uh, we wanna look at what we're looking at here. So 49% of businesses only use basic metrics. And understanding your marketing metrics is really just the first step. We wanna be able to utilize this to make important marketing decisions so that you can stand out from the competition. Now, I'll use this as an example. A lot of us are homeowners here, so let's say two home improvement companies within the South Shore of Mass. They're both looking um, to put out kitchen remodeling and they're trying to come in and break into the market. They're running the same marketing effort, search, social, YouTube, for example, and they're starting to notice some dips in scales. Home improvement company A is deciding to analyze their marketing efforts, really look into their reporting and see the types of customers that are coming in based off of their marketing efforts. They look at creative, they look at ad copy to make sure that what they're doing is correct. Now, uh, their marketing director noticed that their ad copy tends to be uh, an older couple that's standing in front of their home. And they actually wanna reach younger couples who are interested in um, completely renovating their kitchen to make a beautiful home. Now, if you're trying to get a younger audience with an older couple on your ad creative, it's not going to perform as well. So company A decided to make that change. And when we look at marketing metrics to see these, we know that that's going to then help them become better. So we need to look at those basic pieces to make sure that we're noticing that uptick in clicks and conversions. Instead of being home, inco home improvement company B, that leaves everything the same and just wonders why it's not working. Now. Based off of this, who do you think will have a better outcome? Marketing company A or marketing company B? Now, feel free to put this in the chat. What metrics have you used in the past? Um, I'll let Susie jump in as you guys are kind of saying some of these aspects. For sure. So I'm seeing a few folks type in right now into that question box. A couple of folks, you know, are saying that they look more at success as not just new customers, but the right customers, which I agree with 100%. Uh, that was in here from Alex. Uh, Elizabeth looks at success, maybe increased market share or increase in customers. That's also great. Um, a lot of folks are thinking that customer A did a little bit better in terms of results. Um, so that's super interesting too. Keep those answers coming in. You know, what, what metrics might you be looking for? See, Brian here looks at store traffic and sales. Dana has a couple um, specific ones she checks out, clicks, impressions, form fills on the site. Ooh, very cool from Adam, views on his YouTube assets. Paolo, he looks at impressions, unique visits, downloads. Emily looks at increased conversions. Richard, web forms. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. Keep it coming, you guys. Repeat business from MJ, new customers. A lot of folks are saying that. A lot of folks here, Brandon, looking at impressions and clicks. Patty, looking at CTRs, increasing profit. So there's so many things that businesses can look like and, and look at, and that's very clear by this chat here. So great question. And that's the biggest aspect of everything that we're going through. Every single business is gonna be different and what you look at for success metrics is gonna be different. We saw that exactly from the chat. So throughout this conversation, not everything is going to be an exact science for you and your business, but take it with a, a place of looking at what success will look like. So let's start with this. I'm sure during this webinar, you've at least looked at your phone once and that's fine. I totally understand it's human nature, but that's why we wanna make sure we have enough impressions to reach your potential customers as we go through. Now, impressions are that big piece of the pie, and 
people need to see information about your business at least seven times before they become a customer. And that's crazy when you think about it, but we're in such a digital age, people get distracted, they have their phones, their tablets, their computer. I mean, just looking at my desk right now, I have five devices open. So trying to get that individual to actually look at that impression and become a customer is going to take a good amount of time. And we only have a short amount of time to get in front of those potential customers to get their attention. So impressions are really where we put out as much as we can to get those individuals to then lead to clicks. Now, clicks is really when we know people are interested. So they start engaging with the ad content, they get to your website. We know that that's really where we're starting to get that interest and that buy-in from individuals. Now, clicks aren't the end-all be-all, so we need to understand that People are becoming more aware of ads, so they don't always click and convert. So we do need to look at other analytics and metrics to make sure we're doing things correctly, but we wanna get as many people to move to your website as possible. So having strong ad creative is really gonna to lead to that. And it's important to understand how we're tracking these things with something like conversions to make sure that we're all on the same page. Now, conversions is the way that we're able to track where and who becomes a customer. So just looking on this website, you can see a ton of different places where people can engage with a website, whether it's a contact form, scheduling an appointment, registering online, applying for financial assistance, and then also having the chat box. All of these ways are ways that you can get people to potentially engage with your business. So it's not that they're searching for a phone number or trying to find you, it's readily available for them because we wanna understand that the customer needs the path of least resistance. And when we get to your website, we wanna make sure it's super conversion friendly so that we can get everything um, from a tracking standpoint and we can make better marketing decisions. So think about your website and feel free to put this in the chat. Do you have form fills, chat boxes, contact pages? Um, and if not, is that something you're interested in looking at? Because again, we wanna make sure that we're making it as easy as possible. In business, we're really focused on website clicks or leads, but sometimes we need to take a step back and look at things from the consumer side of things because we wanna make it as easy as possible for them to reach you. And we wanna also make it as easy as possible for us as marketers to be able to track to make sure things are working correctly, to make sure that we're doing the right things to the right people. And conversion is the key to make sure that we're doing what we said we were and following the original goals. Um, so making sure that we have all of these things set up on your website and really tracking will help us start telling that story of who got to your website and how they got there so that we can make smarter marketing decisions as we go forward. And the way that we're able to bring that all together is to look at conversion rates. So we talked about impressions, clicks, and conversions, but we really need to think about that as conversion rate as well. And when you look at different businesses, your conversion rate is going to be very different. Um, so when we look at a lawyer, for example, converting one customer is very different from someone who sells shovels. They're gonna to need to sell a lot more shovels and need a lot more people to convert than a lawyer who has one higher paying client. So we wanna understand that conversion may look different for every business, but it's always a good way to track to see if things are working. So we start with impressions being a lot of people, your clicks are getting to that less amount of people, but we know that those are becoming closer to who your actual customer is in your conversion, which leads to your conversion rate is even less people. Um, so we wanna make sure that we look at all of these things and we start thinking about this in looking at reporting. So feel free to put in the question box, what do you use? Google Analytics, a spreadsheet, a dashboard, and what part of this, these metrics are important to you? Because as we start thinking about these things, we're able to make sure that we're looking at the right types of tracking to make those decisions. And conversions and conversations are really hard when we look at things online. So something that we have to keep in mind is people are busy. And as you can see on this, people are, the consumer is searching, they're socializing, and they're surfing. And to simplify this, we really need to make sure that when we think about online and digital marketing, that we're where the consumer is. Now, everyone thinks of search engine marketing as the first place to start. And we know search engine marketing as Google because it is the powerhouse of that. And it's really known more for being a verb than the actual search engine itself. And this is your most valuable real estate when we think about converting and getting those clients. 
but we don't think about how we socialize with people when we look at social and different aspects of how we are engaging with our customer base. So when we think about getting people everywhere they're searching, we want to make sure that we're clicking them in when they're on the rest of the internet and spending the most amount of their internet minutes. Now, I joked earlier about the fact that you might have checked your phone. You've probably checked it again, probably looking at Facebook or Instagram. And Facebook owns about five internet minutes. So it wouldn't surprise me that you've checked it. And we want to make sure that you're not only where people are searching and actively there, but also where people are socializing and spending the rest of their time on the internet. So we can hit them throughout their whole consumer journey and make sure that we're converting these individuals as they're going to become your potential customers. And I promise this will all come together when we look at reporting in general. So as we put it together, what is ROI? Why are we doing marketing and what does return on investment look like? It's an easy theory if you think about it, right? You look at sales growth and you divide it by marketing costs and you get a marketing ROI. But it's not as simple as that at a baseline, yeah, but there's a lot that go into it. Seasonality, your marketing mix, the product or service you're offering, and that marketing ROI may look different for everyone. So as I continue going through, you're gonna see a few numbers and I'm gonna ask you to take a pause before assuming that's always the best route. Um, we look at the marketing funnel and we want to make sure that everything is pulling in together. Marketing costs for some things might have a higher ROI for certain things, um, whereas less for other things. We want to be focused on lower funnel tactics and getting leads and website clicks, but we also want to remember that we want to hit everyone as they go through their journey versus just getting the last click attribution. So what is a good marketing ROI? Now, rule of thumb is a strong marketing ROI is five to one. Now, before everyone thinks that that is the end all be all, this is depending on your industry and your specific business model. So it will change depending on who you are, what industry you're in, the competitors, et cetera. But what works for a kitchen remodeling company where a five to one ROI may work, it might not work in the same way for our friends at a, the personal injury law firm down the street. So it's important to understand what your best ROI is for your business. And that's really where we can come into play as marketing partners to be there and assist you through that decision-making process. Looking at how your goals have changed might affect your marketing ROI as well. If you're looking for lower funnel tactics versus higher funnel awareness, that might be a little bit different. So we want to make sure that our goals are aligned with what our overall ROI is. Now, I'm sure all of you will laugh at this next slide because it's one of the funniest movies. Um, ROI shows what's really doing the work. So all of us have been in a group project before. I know I have, and this tends to be the dynamic of most of them. Someone does 99% of the work, someone has no clue what they're doing. And we see the people who are gonna say they're gonna help, but they're actually not doing anything. And then the one that is there at the beginning and doesn't show up till the very end and decides to take all the credit. So how do we look at what does what? Now, search is the one that gets all the credit because it is the bottom of the funnel tactic, but we also know that there are other aspects that are doing a significant amount of the work here. So we wanna give credit where credit is due to all of our marketing efforts and understand how the ROI leads to overall making new business decisions and moving your marketing dollars based off what you're looking at. Now, when we look at analytics and deciding what that story looks like, what works one year may not work the next year. So we always wanna make sure that we're really diving into everything that we're looking at. And that ties into our, how our funnel impacts ROI. So earlier I talked about a marketing funnel. Now I'm sure you've all heard of this before or seen it. It's a pretty graphic that tells us who becomes a customer and where they kind of come into play. Now search engine marketing lives at the bottom. That's really where we look at lower funnel tactics and see that that is the last click attribution. So we see search is the one that ends up being taking the majority of things. But we need to remember that it's always important to have a full funnel to impact our return on investment. So the leads will dry up at some point at the bottom of the funnel. So we always wanna make sure we're putting people in at the top as they start going through their journey. Now, I've talked about kitchen remodeling a few times just because it's an easy example. So when you start that process, you start in the awareness stage. You're spending time on Instagram or Pinterest, looking at what your dream kitchen may look like. As you continue through the process, you're going to start making those decisions with whether that's consideration, purchase, loyalty, et cetera. 
um, to make sure that we get those leads down the funnel. We want to look at broad view ROI to understand that the awareness is almost as, as important as the actual customer who comes in because it took a journey to get there. And here's an example of what that looks like. So here's four different customers in the journey that actually led to the sales call. Now, when we look at attribution, people look at the first or last touch attribution or only use one single platform when looking at marketing. We really want to focus more heavily on that multi-touch attribution to make sure that we're making informed decisions. So as you can see, these four different people went to digital marketing, a website, and led to a sales call. They looked at um, just Google Ads and went straight to the website. They saw an email, went to an event. All of these led to sales, but in different ways. Now, think about if you took all of this out but Google Ads. Are you only going to get one of those customers? That's something to keep in mind when we think about where our leads are coming from and our overall marketing decision. And this might be my favorite slide of the whole presentation because understanding what dominating the market is is really key to success. Now, feel free to put questions or feel free to put your answers in the question box. But if we're searching for, let's say, a kitchen remodeling service, for example, are you going to choose the business that you've only seen on search engine marketing? Or are you going to choose the business where you've seen everywhere? Now, just from an emotional standpoint or the way that human nature works, we're more likely to choose the business that we see everywhere. Our trust in that brand and brand recall begins increasing quickly when we see a brand multiple times. Um, How Lumber is the example on the right, and it's a great example of showing they're in search by seeing Benjamin Moore paint near me, but they're also on YouTube, utilizing display, social advertising, email, and print, which allows them to be hit where every single consumer is searching. And that's a huge part of how we look at things. Your consumer wants to feel connected to you, whether it's through Facebook with just an offer, whether it's YouTube really tying into the DIY perspective of things, in their weekend newspaper while they're drinking their coffee, or while they're searching an internet. They're more likely to be your customer if you tie into those aspects of being where they are. Now, as we continue, we want to dive into the analytics a little bit. So I've gone through a lot of topics, and I want to make sure that we're all still tracking. So you came to this webinar to understand how to make data-driven decisions about your marketing. And I've talked a little bit about funnels and looking at clicks and attributions and impressions, but how does that tie into making sure that we're making the right decision? Now, Google, in it, Google Analytics and a spreadsheet are two ways of looking at reporting. So Google Analytics lets us see what your web traffic looks like. It shows us the multiple touch point attribution and a spreadsheet that may come from a marketing partner or just something that your marketing director is able to pull together is going to be a huge aspect. So we can see the impressions, clicks, click through rate. But what does that actually tell us? It doesn't really tell that story of who our actual customer is going to be. Um, we have access to a 24 seven dashboard whenever you work with us at Local IQ that allows us to paint a stronger picture. So it takes that tracking of data and turns it into who are my best customers? Where are they geographically coming from? Can I listen to phone calls and provide feedback to the people who are answering the phone on how we can work on training methods or best ways to answer phone calls? How do I understand where my leads are coming from? Is it that they're coming from search or social? Do I need to start making ad creative changes because it's not converting in the same way? These are all things that Client Center allows you to do, which is access, which you have access to 24 seven. So um, when you work in the marketing industry, sometimes your boss calls you at eight o'clock at night and says, I need a report pulled by tomorrow morning. Client Center allows you to do that. Whereas when you receive a spreadsheet, it tells you a few things, but Client Center really takes that to the next level. And it's all in one place, like I said. And you have the capability of going back to your stakeholders, maybe it's the business owner themselves, and making actionable decisions about what's next in marketing. So like I said earlier, with the Facebook ad that wasn't converting as well. Client Center allows us to understand not only how many leads and clicks are coming to it, but to also look at year over year growth and to also make creative changes. So if we look at a creative and there is someone who's a bit older, but we want to reach a younger audience, we know that we can make that actionable decision to change creative messaging to see if it works better. You can look at A-B testing and making sure that we're doing the best things possible. 
All of this is really unlocks with Client Center versus just looking at DIY results. Now, I'm not saying that DIY isn't doesn't work for everyone, but when you're able to take it to the next level and make those actionable decisions, it's really key to your success. So I'll leave you with a few questions as we continue through. Is your reporting working for you? Do you have an easy to understand reporting dashboard? Do you know which marketing investments are working best for you? This is looking at is social the best place for you? Is Facebook working better than Instagram? Do you want to try TikTok? Um, do you look at a lack, do you lack easy ways of keeping track of new leads? So when leads come into you, are you able to find it all in one place? Is it coming from a bunch of different sources? Client Center really allows us to track all of your leads in one place, which is a really cool thing when you're um, trying to get out on the street and be able to respond to leads as fast as possible. And do your team members inconsistently follow up with prospects? These are all things that you're able to tell with reporting to make sure that you're making the best marketing decisions coming forward. Uh, when you look at how team members are responding to phone calls, you can track that in Client Center to be able to make sure that you're listening to those things and seeing what that works. And 62% of small business owners don't know if their marketing works. So we want to make sure that reporting tells the best story to make sure that everything's working in the best way possible. Now, a few final thoughts before I leave you. We want to be able to take all of this data and create a story. So how do we utilize this reporting to create new customers? Now, we're back to the spreadsheet again. You can see impressions, clicks, click-through rate, et cetera. This is all great information. But how do we break down that one lead and find more people? Uh, so data is great. I'm a total data geek. Everyone who knows me will tell you I could dive into data all day. And we really want to be able to take this to the next level so you can find more of the right customers and be able to uh, create lookalike audiences and make better creative decisions and tie into all of those things. A spreadsheet can tell you how much you're spending, look at impression share, and make sure that we're from a nuanced behavior hitting those uh, benchmarks, but it can't actually paint a picture of the best customer for you. So I'm gonna use myself as an example for this one. Um, I'm one of the leads on your spreadsheet, but who am I as a consumer? I'm a homeowner based in the South Shore of Massachusetts. I make a decent household income and I'm in the market for kitchen renovation. I want you to understand the path that I've taken to get here. Um, so I became a lead, but what came before that? And how do we make sure that we're weeding out the people who don't make the most sense? So we look at the fact that leads are coming in. Are they the best qualified leads? Are you able to find more of me who's ready to act now and completely gut out my kitchen and redo it? Or are you looking for someone who's a little bit further down the funnel that isn't ready and will be in six to eight months? So are we able to find those leads that are coming in? Or do we want to spend money in different ways? These are all things that we can tell by creating a story. So do we want to understand analytics in a way that it's the key to our success or just look at things on a spreadsheet? And understanding the analytics and how to paint that story is going to be key. We want to make sure we're painting a full picture of marketing. And I'll use Susie as an example on the next one. When we look at a full picture of marketing, we want to make those decisions in a way that we're able to look at our marketing efforts. So I'm gonna pull Client Center back up again. You can look at your leads, your calls, your clicks, et cetera, but we also wanna make sure that we're looking at things um, to find the best customer. So we understand one tactic isn't going to be the best way to do that. So if we only first focus on search or social, we're not going to get our best potential customer because people by human nature are going to be in a lot of different places. The screenshot on the bottom is a great view of how Google Analytics looks at this. So this is what's called a multiple touch point attribution model. So we look at the funnel that people go down to make their decision. So um, Susie and I are both in market for kitchen remodeling and we're based in the same geographic footprint, but we wanna make different purchasing decisions. So looking at the whole way of marketing allows us to do that. Now Susie is more search focused on a DIY kitchen remodel. So she's going to spend time on YouTube looking at ways that she can DIY her kitchen at home. Is it pulling down kitchen cabinets and repainting it? She's looking for that aspect of things because she's super into being able to do these projects during the spring and summer because the winter is over and she needs something to do. Whereas I'm focused more so on 
spending my journey on Instagram and creating my dream kitchen and having someone else do it for me. Softball is super crazy, so I need someone else to redo my kitchen, and we look at things in different ways. We both end up going with the same company, but the way that we got there is very different. So when we look at attribution, we want to be able to see how that works. So we both started in different places, but we ended up being the same customer. If you weren't on YouTube for Susie, would she have chosen your competitor? And if you weren't on Instagram for me, who would I have gone with? Looking at all these metrics and not focusing on one tactic will allow you to reach both of us and gain a stronger ROI. So we always want to make sure that we're making these decisions to be the best return on investment for your business. And Client Center, as well as any tracking, really allows us to paint that picture. We want more Susie's. We want more Marisol's to be able to be that person that makes the most sense. And that will allow you to make more decisions going forward. And keep in mind that your goals are going to change quarterly, yearly. So we want to make sure we're always looking at the analytics to make these decisions uh, to make sure that ROI continues to change and grow as your business does. Staying with a one size fits all approach won't always be the best way to look at things. So two key takeaways that I'm going to leave you with today. One is that you can't measure ROI or success by looking at one tactic or metric. We want to make sure that we're looking at the full picture of what marketing looks like to make sure that we're successful. And two, know the story and not just the numbers. Analytics are mostly numbers and they can be boring for most of us. But take the numbers that are on a screen or a spreadsheet and tell the story of your audience. When you're speaking to uh, your business owner or marketing director or stakeholder, Make sure that you're able to say, how do we find more of your Golden Goose customers like Susie and actually create lookalike audiences based off of that? How do we look at analytics and make sure that it's working in the best way possible for your brand? Creative changes, um, changing your geographic footprint, tying into seasonality of the business. All of these things are important stories to be able to tell versus just looking at numbers and making marketing decisions off of that. So. I'll leave you with that and pass it on to Susie. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Awesome. Thanks so much, Marisol. Holy smokes. That was a lot of super helpful, super interesting information. So again, thank you to Marisol. We just put up a poll for you folks. So if you feel like you want to learn a little bit more or just you know see how you can improve your reporting, use our tools to get better reporting, or if you have just more specific questions that are unique to your business or your needs, definitely hit yes in that poll. Um, we'll, you'll be able to speak with someone separately to get your own individualized marketing assessment. So we'll keep that poll up for you guys to check out what we have to offer and how we can help you measure your success as accurately as possible. So we're going to keep that poll up for the rest of today's webinar. And in the meantime, I'm going to start a conversation that you guys can listen into while you opt into the poll to talk with Marisol about the questions that you guys chatted in. So keep those questions coming into the question box during these next you know, 20 minutes or so. And we'll just have an open conversation with Marisol about some of the great things that you guys brought up along the way. We saw some really great interaction in here. So without further ado, while you guys opt into that poll there, I'm going to start calling out some of the questions here. So make sure you're typing in your questions as we go. Now, Marisol, I know you just went in really in depth in a lot of different areas. Um, so there's so many questions coming in right now, but I think you know there was a couple that just came in. Um, one that I thought was really, really interesting um, from Kyle here. And I think this would be a good starting point for us to initiate the Q&A because this was a pretty broad question that I think could apply to a lot of the listeners here today. Um, and Kyle asks, you know, that one of the key conversation points that you had, Marisol, was being where your customers are. So in that aspect, would using your marketing budget be best used on a wide variety of places and then narrow down from there? Or do you think it would be better to spend a larger amount in one place at a time for a more obvious result? Um, I think I can probably assume the answer to this one, uh, but I want to hear what you have to say on that. I think it really depends. 
um, on what your overall goals are? And I know that's a hard question to kind of pose back, but if you're looking at driving sales and you need more of that click attribution, for example, you're going to want to put the majority of your budget into search, for example. But you also want to make sure that you're not putting all of your eggs into that one basket. So you do want to diversify a little bit, but understanding what your overall goals are will help decide those uh, decisions. And when you work with us as a partner, we're able to have those in-depth conversations to make sure that we're providing the best feedback for you and your business, um, because it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. That's an awesome answer. I totally agree. I, I don't think that, you know, I think it's going to look a little bit different for everyone, but I know just from experience from sitting in on past webinars and doing past webinars myself, you know, it's best to kind of cover your bases and make sure you are where your customers are, like Kyle even brought up. So I think that was a really great answer there. Um, so with that being said, let's narrow into maybe some of the more specific questions here. I have one coming in from Lissa. Um, and again, I think this is going to be one of those things where it is a case by case basis, but I would just love to hear your thoughts on Lissa's question about how much weight do you think you should put towards, you know, impressions versus other metrics or like, is there, it didn't seem like that way with the presentation that you had that there was one champion metric, but do you think that you should be weighing one more than the other as a business owner? What would you say to that? I think we need to look at all metrics in general. So um, when we look at impressions, it's important to understand that we're putting out a lot of information to a, a more large audience. So we want to make sure that we're at least hitting your audience within your geographic footprint seven times. So um, that's one aspect of things. The other aspect as we continue down the funnel is to really look at clicks, who's becoming your customer, and really look at looking at those conversions and leads as well. So as much as I want to put stake in one versus the other, I think they all tell an important part to the story. Obviously, we want to know that your best customers are converting and that marketing is working well. So we want to look at that, but we also don't want to take out impressions and clicks as part of that equation. Awesome. I think that's a really good, well-rounded answer. So thank you for that, Marisol. Um, I have another super interesting question in here too, just about kind of like the general state of metri marketing metrics and tracking and reporting from Dr. Hunt Helm here. So Dr. Hunt asked, you know, what would you, what would you say, what is the state of campaign attribution these days? Um, you know, in a multi-channel campaign, right, where you have a lot of different places where you're promoting your business, say digital print, broadcast, you know, how do you, how would you say to go about knowing which touch points or tactics have the most impact? Um, you know, what would you say to that to track like the most accurately if you're across channels? I think he's trying to say. Sure, I think the biggest aspect is just making sure that we're tracking everything in the same method. So um, we know search engine marketing is going to be the thing that ends up being the final click attribution and tends to be the most lead volume. But when we look at being able to track things that are offline and online, we need to look at them uh, in different ways. So when you put out a print ad, you're putting it to an audience that isn't 100, like you don't know exactly who's gonna convert off of that. So then we look at other metrics more in detail, like search or social, and really look at how those nuances work. I think when we're making data-driven decisions, we have to look at those individual pieces and make changes as we can. Um, and we can go more in depth into that uh, as you look at different partnerships that we have available to really make sure that we're answering that best for your business model and what we're able to look at there. That's a really great answer. Thank you, Marisol. Um, wow, so many questions coming in. This is really great, you guys. Keep those questions coming our way because we have about 10 minutes or so. We could probably knock out a few more of these here. Um, and to those folks, again, we're just going to keep that poll up uh, so that you can really listen in on the answers here from Marisol. Um, and I think you already, you know, touched on a little bit about this. Um, you know, I would say, let's see, there's a question here from MJ. Um, from your, and this would be a great question for you, Marisol, from MJ here. From your perspective or your experience, what kind of process would you use when you know, working with a client or, you know, working with an account here, 
to construct the ideal customer profile, right? So you kind of talked about how, you know, you're using these marketing metrics to see where your clients are and be where your clients are, right? But how do you know who that ideal client is? How would you maybe build that customer profile uh, for an account or for a client? So I'm glad you asked that. I'm going to geek out a little bit here because this is the world that I love to live in. Um, so understanding who your best customer is comes in two ways. So one, who the customers are that are coming into your door, who the customers are that you're speaking to daily. What do they look like? Are they homeowners? Are they younger? Are they older? You want to start with that baseline of your first party data. So the things that you're able to pull in. But then on the flip side of that, you also want to look at what your growth looks like. So currently you're receiving people who are homeowners between the ages of 25 and 34, but instead you want to reach homeowners who are between the ages of 35 and 45, they have a higher household income. That is kind of how you look at metrics in two ways. So one is who you're currently reaching, one is who you want to reach, and those decisions as you kind of grow as a business, are going to be how you change your marketing efforts. And then on the flip side of that, when you look at reporting, you wanna see based off of your marketing efforts, who's actually coming into the door, not only from who your current customer base was, but how it's changed throughout your marketing efforts. So although it's a bit of a loaded question, that's the way you kind of look at your consumers and how you want your business model to grow. It's going to change year over year or even quarterly depending on kind of what your business model looks like. And it also might change for different parts of your business model. So if you're looking at kitchen remodeling versus painting, that customer may be different and the marketing efforts that you need to do for one versus the other are going to change. So your customer may look different in different ways. What a well-rounded answer. Thank you for that, Marisol. And I like how you kind of break it down by, you know, there's obviously customers or an audience that you're probably already reaching or in, in contact with versus those clients that you ideally want to reach eventually. Uh, so super great, well-rounded answer there. We have tons of awesome, more awesome questions coming our way. Um, one came in from Reagan here that I think is super great. Um, and I'd love to hear your ideas on this, Marisol of, you know, she asked, what would you, how would you know if you are or aren't measuring metrics accordingly? Like, are there any red flags that folks should look out for when they are reporting? I think the biggest red flag in reporting is seeing that the customers or the leads that you're receiving aren't what you're actually looking for. So when we think about client center, for example, if we're listening to um, different uh, different phone calls that come in or seeing the form fills that are coming in and they're not your the customer you're looking for, then we need to start changing what metrics we're going after or changing our overall strategy. And then on the flip side of that, just looking at if sales volume or things are dipping. So if you've been running the same marketing for a year and it's been working great until that point and then you notice a dip, that's when you need to start actually looking at your analytics to make sure that that goes back up. Was that a change in seasonality? Is, was the economy affected? Was there marketing changes that you need to, to make? Having these open conversations and being able to um, decide what those things look like is going to be key to make sure that your marketing efforts are working for you versus not working at all. I love that. I love those red flags and I, I really enjoy that well-rounded overall question of, at, you know, or point at the end of like, is it working for you or are you putting more work into trying to make your marketing work when sometimes, you know, you have to understand that it, you have this channel that you want, you would anticipate to work really well or you want it to work really well and sometimes it doesn't work out that way. So I think that's why reporting and looking out for those reporting red flags are so important. Um, thank you for that feedback there, Marisol. Still getting a ton of questions in. This is crazy. Um, I would say there's another one coming in here that I think is pretty interesting. Um, in general, and this is from Natasha, and I, I think that this is a, a little bit of a subjective question, but I would love to hear your thoughts, Marisol. Do you feel like just general advertising or promoting your business is getting more and more expensive? You know, we're seeing uh, roadblocks come in the way in, the, in a way of like, you know, iOS 14 and the deprecation of third-party cookies, things like that. 
do you think that could have an impact on costs for advertising and marketing or do you feel like it's been pretty steady what would you say to that I think it depends on the vertical and the industry you're in, but if you look at what happened before and uh, kind of during and after the, even the pandemic, we've noticed that marketing costs less during the pandemic and now is increasing in just search, for example, some of your costs per clicks. And Facebook and uh, Google are walled gardens in a lot of ways. So they change their mind on different things and we do have to run into things like third party cookies. So advertising in general could become more expensive, but that's when we make these data driven decisions to make sure that we're putting the best eggs in each of the different baskets. So um, is it that your cost per lead is getting to a point where it's too high? Do we need to change keywords? Do we need to change geographic footprint? Um, all of those things come into play to make sure that we're, able to optimize off the best budget and making sure that is i mean marketing will always change and it may become more expensive but we want to make sure that we're always making those data-driven decisions to continue having the best results possible for your business i think that's a great way to answer that and handle it is it's so true that it's going to be so dependent on the industry um but i i really like those analogies there so thank you for that answer um, Marisol. So I have another question um, coming in and we have time for just a couple more. So keep those questions coming. Um, I wanted to ask, you know, what would you say to, there's someone in here, Dana here, who is just kind of, you know, talking about her situation and she kind of wants to know, you know, what would you say to maybe a local business that's not super tech savvy, you know, maybe hasn't really dipped their toes into digital marketing, so they don't really know where to start. I mean, we know that there's these metrics that we have to track and these things we have to set up. Where would you say a good jumping off point would be for, for someone in that situation? I'd say start simple. So um, I think we go back to the basics of marketing in general. Start writing down your goals and understanding what that looks like. And when you see what other businesses within your segment are doing, look at what works and what doesn't work from their standpoint. I think we need to look at the basics of, obviously you wanna be where your consumers are and understanding who your consumers are is really important, but feel free to ask questions as you're starting that journey, whether it's other business owners that are in similar verticals um, or reaching out to different marketing consultants. Even if it's just from an educational purpose, start researching and understanding those things because it's not a one size fits all approach. Yes, Google is a place where a lot of people start, but it's not best for every industry. I think just being visible um, as you start out in marketing, so making sure you have a Facebook presence, making sure your Google My Business profile is up to date are all good places to start as you start moving into uh, different digital marketing because the key to um, marketing being strong is a strong foundation. So if you don't have the beginner basics checked off, then you're building a house on an uneven ground. And that ends up leading to overall success not being strong. And that's a great answer. I love the idea of just keeping it simple um, and doing your research first, right? You don't need to dive head first if you're hesitant or don't really have experience, you know, just yet because you want to have that confidence. So I love those ideas there, Marisol. That's awesome. All right, we have just a couple minutes left, so I'll maybe ask one or two more questions. I wish we had time to answer every single one, but be sure to hit yes in that poll so that you can get your questions answered individually. And with that, I'll maybe ask two questions to Marisol. I'll start with this one from Barsha. If anyone else has last minute questions, now is your time to put them in. And again, a friendly reminder that um, this will be recorded you can find the recording later on our YouTube and you'll get the materials afterwards in your inbox. So with that, again, thank you for taking all these questions, Marisol, but I have one from Marsha on a little bit more of a specific metric here. He wants to know, you know, how, how important is a high click-through rate? He's had experience with kind of a lower click-through rate. Is there maybe, I'm thinking there's maybe other metrics that could offset that or, you know, again, it's kind of that same question with the impressions, like how much should you weigh that? I think click through rate is interesting because there's a lot that comes into play with this. So um, where are you driving people to? What is your creative look like? All of these things are going to play into your overall click through rate. 
uh, and also making sure you're in front of the right types of customers. So let's use a Facebook ad, for example, just because it's easy to visualize. If you're selling a product on uh, and you put out a Facebook ad, but your Facebook ad doesn't relate to the customers that you're specifically looking at, your click through rate on that ad just isn't going to be as high. Um, just because people don't see themselves within that creative message. The other thing that comes into play with uh, click-through rate in general is people understand marketing now. So they, when they see an ad, they know it's an ad. So not everyone is going to click on the ad anymore. So you also want to look at other conversions. When you started running Facebook, for example, did your overall website traffic increase? Because some people just type in www.localiq.com versus clicking on a local IQ ad. So all of those things come into play and it is vertical specific. So um, some industries have a lower click through rate than others, just based off of what you're kind of in. Um, I hope that answers the question. Awesome, no, that did. And just where I know we're right at time. So um, I know you touched on a little bit on the differences between Client Center and Google Analytics. Um, they, this Bridget, you know, wants to know, is there a difference? Can Client Center kind of track the leads coming in from different platforms? I think it can, but I just want to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, so Google Analytics is amazing. Uh, I think it's a great baseline of looking at everything. Client Center allows us to look at everything within one place. Um, so it can pull in things like Google Analytics. It can look at all the marketing that you're running um, with us as a company, and it can also add additional layers to it. So you can look at your demographics, you can look at creative messaging, and you can tailor it based off of um, what you as a business owner and or marketing manager need. So uh, if you're speaking to specific stakeholders and you need certain metrics that um, are within Client Center, we can switch out those things to make sure that you're getting the best possible uh, dashboard available to you. Um, so they both have a place. Uh, one just is a little bit more in depth than the other. Totally couldn't agree more with that. Well, thank you so much, Marisol. I mean, it was really an honor to be able to pick your brain and ask all these amazing questions. Again, everyone on, thank you so much for joining. It was great to have you all here to learn along with us from the wonderful Marisol. So again, check out the recording on our YouTube channel, find answers to your questions on our blog and definitely check us out on social. Um, and thank you all so much for joining. We'll have another webinar next month, so keep your eyes peeled. Bye. Bye, everyone.